The Gary Nago or Garifuna people make up some 6% of Belize's population, accounting for approximately 24,000 Belizeans. Belizean Garinago, for the most part, occupy land in the southern part of the country. But below the surface of their modernization in Belize, the Garifuna people may in some ways still be fighting a battle for land that dates back to the early 16th century. You might know about the Black Carib Wars, or you've heard about the Black Carib Wars. Well, we were the Black Caribs. That's the name the British gave us. But traditionally, from then we were Garinago. And we had to fight to keep our land. And that fight lasted over five years. That war lasted over five years. And that's how far we would go to fight for what we own. Following that war, approximately 5,000 Garinagos were exiled to Roatan, an island off the coast of Honduras. Yesterday was 224 years since we landed in Roatan from that exile. From March 11th to April 12th. It was not voluntary. We did not go willfully or happily, but we were forced. While some Garinago decided to remain in Roatan, others made their way inland to Honduras, Nicaragua, Guatemala, and Belize. On November 19, 1802, the first group of Garinago arrived in Belize. At the time, the Garunago people were primarily fishermen, farmers, and hunters. The land for us as Garunagos is very, it's very important because that's part of our livelihood. When we were in St. Vincent, in Honduras, and in Belize, we eat what we plant. So it's a very important, and it becomes more important now with the economy situation that we're going through at this time food going up, cost of living going up. So it's a very important that we have land that we can use to work, to plant cassava, tea, to plant yams and planting to provide for our family. And as part of being Garifuna, we share with our neighbors and our family. Recently, predominantly Garinago communities like Georgetown, St. Bites and Barranco have been faced with challenges to the original border markings established by their ancestors. The latest of these comes out of the Barranco village where the indigenous Mayas of Midway are reportedly developing land Barranco residents claim. Midway, the villagers of Midway, the Midway village council chairman is using the CCJ consent order to intimidate the villagers of Barranco. And while they are also using, they are getting closer and closer and using lands that are for Barranco, but they don't, the Barranco villagers can't get anywhere near their village. But history know it, that Midway is farm, Midway is on Barranco farmland. And I think that there should be some level of respect there. Miranda George says villagers in Barranco are seeking to amicably resolve that issue. Simultaneously, the National Garifuna Council has launched an agriculture project which seeks to define and map out land that the first Garunago farmed in Belize. We're working with that on all our Garifuna communities, which are down south. That's Dan Greek. And mainly we are working with Hopkins, charge tongue, seen by Barranco, and we add the, and we have Punta Gorda and Dan Riga. And at the end of that project, then we have phase two to that project where it will be to get to approach government and let them get them, give them our findings. As the struggle to control the land continues, this question also arises. Is the next generation of Garinago in a position to continue cultivating the land that their ancestors established in southern Belize? Many of the Garinago women who once worked the fields are now off to school and employed outside of their communities. As a young Garifuna woman, I feel that our relationship with the land has completely changed. Um, 
we as girls and we change along with the times. So most of the women now are not depending on the men like we did when we just arrived. And we're now geared towards being educated and providing for our family. It's no longer the sense of having a man as the head of the whole home as it was back then. Back in those times, the men were, would have been one of the main providers and the women would go into the farm and to work the land. Reporting for News 5, I am Paul Lopez.